Good morning, everyone. I'm Rob Bayless, the Executive and Artistic Director of The Broad Stage. Welcome to Music Mornings, our second live stream of music on Sunday mornings. We're thrilled to be with you. I hope these endeavors are bringing you uh, equal parts, some entertainment, some solace, uh, and some peace of mind and connection to all that we hold dear here at the Bird Stadium um, while we are in the land of physical distancing and, and isolation. Um, it's wonderful to beam into your homes and to bring you these wonderful concerts. Um, last night we also enjoyed our Poetry Hour with the Red Hen Press. I encourage you to take a look at that. It's now on our website and can be viewed in archive. So this morning I am uh, honored and thrilled to introduce uh, this incredible cast um, beginning with Lynn Harrell. Lynn Harrell, the incredible American treasure. He's a cellist uh, who has been at the, uh, the height of American music uh, since his debut in 1961. Um, he's brought us incredible insight, joy, and, and wonderment throughout a year, uh, career that has spanned decades. And we're thrilled to have him with us this morning. Uh, let's introduce Lynn Harrell. <laughs> Welcome, Lynn. Great to be here, thank you so much. Oh, it's wonderful to see you. I don't wanna stop anyone from hearing you play so beautifully, so why don't you just dive right in and we'll, we'll come back and chat in a moment. Right, okay, here we go. And all the moms from the third suite. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, and good morning to you. Uh, you you have played so many concerts that I've had the great good fortune to have have been <laughs> been present at, um, and have just brought so much to so many audiences over the years. I wonder just how this moment is treating you. How are you feeling right now, and and how are you spending your days at this incredibly complex time? Yes, it is an incredibly complex time, and my heart goes out to all the people who are not able to go outside for the, for the victims of this terrible pandemic and uh, to all my friends and to my audiences. Uh, it's uh, very, very trying. Um, a performer lives his entire life. I'm 76 and I'm still performing. So it um, it's uh, a yank from the very insides. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you, you have been through a number of, of really important times in, in, in our history. And in particular, I think you, you mentioned to me earlier that you were actually in Taiwan during SARS and you were also in New York City during 9-11. And I wonder if you would speak a little bit to, to how those affected you musically and personally. I think that the, uh, the SARS epidemic, um, uh, when I was in Taiwan, uh, didn't frighten me so much because I was a, a naive youth. But I tell you that um, when I was in an Upper West Side um, uh, breakfast cafeteria and um, the waitress came over and she was absolutely ash and white and she said, I said, what's what's the wrong? She says, well, the second tower has fallen. I said, what? So she said, yeah, you can go outside and see because it was so many uh, blocks, a uh, hundred or so blocks down uh, uh, Ninth Avenue, but you could see the Trade Center mm -hmm. at the vantage point. So I went outside and I saw nothing but a plume of smoke. My jaw dropped and I just was so astounded. It was a very frightening time. Then, of course, in the next few days, I wasn't able to get out of the city and um, I uh, took my cello and went into a few churches that were on the Upper West Side and took it out and started playing some Bach as I started out today. Mm -hmm. um, it, music has the most in, incredible power to, uh, to put an arm around a, a person's soul mm -hmm. and, to, and to give a hug. It's uh, just quite remarkable. That week in New York City, the first things that were arranged and, uh, and, and scheduled were things that had to do with music. Um, from kids who, uh, with their guitars, would start playing in the streets to um, the churches who would put on special services of, of, um, of music and hymns. And uh, so, yeah. I've, of course, lived my entire life with music. So at this time, with this uh, terrible pandemic, not to be able to uh, reach out to my fellow man and to perform um, and to give them some solace that way uh, is um, very disturbing to my soul. I'm so used to it being something quite, quite different. Mm. I, it's, I've been very touched as well by how music specifically has crept in to so many of the isolation circles around around the world that that especially in Italy as people are singing to each other across balconies and that the the need to connect in in that sense um, I think you're absolutely right is it's a unique power of music to to reach into moments like this and and help to to redefine them or or at least provide the the sustenance we need to endure them um, I wonder if if you have any words for I mean, th this is a moment when performers can't reach out in traditional ways. And I think there it, it, it's a very complicated time in that sense. Do you, do you have any advice for, for musicians who are, are finding their way through this? Listen uh, where you can. 
uh, on the radio, on YouTube, uh, on television. Um, if you play an instrument, just force yourself, whatever your mood, to pick it up and strum a few notes. Just a few things can make us feel more at home. The brain scanner uh, in the last 20, 30 years has been able to investigate the live living brain. And music um, is the only thing that activates both hemispheres equally. So it um, is a very mysterious, we don't know why that is. It's very mysterious, but it's very, very, very powerful. I've always thought um, long before I uh, understood that about um, the science, that if you get to the world leaders together and get them to react emotionally to music, that the so-called meetings and conversations and discussions would have a completely different turn. Well, both hemispheres involved here. Um, I wonder if you would play a little bit more for us. You have a, a wonderful program planned and I, I wonder if we can hear it now. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Maria Teresa Paradis, a Sicilian. My father, before he became an opera singer, was a violinist, and I have his music with his signature on the top when he was a professor of violin in Oklahoma City in the, in the early 20s. <laughs> I love the way it says goodbye. <laughs> what, what is it? Or something completely different. <laughs> sweet dreams. Thank you. 
We should all have sweet dreams at this difficult time. Oh, thank you so, so much, Lynn. It's beautiful to hear you as ever. Um, and your incredible spirit and generosity are, are exceeded only by your musicianship. Thank you so much. It's just a gift to have you and um, especially the the continuity that your presence brings to a moment like this is is something we we can't forget. So thank you very much. And we look forward to more. I want to have you live on our stage someday soon. Someday soon. I reach out to all who can be moved and touched by music, which means absolutely everybody. everybody. <laughs> thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you. Well, we'll move on now in our program to um, a terrific performance. Uh, last week, we enjoyed some young musicians from the Sola Academy. And again, this week, we will do just that. Um, we'll be hearing from the uh, the Shaipur family, uh, excuse me, Shapuri family. Um, Aria, Liam, and Layla will join us uh, right now with a, a piece that they've arranged. And we'll have a quick chat with them. Oh. Welcome, <laughs> Shapuri. Hi. Uh, hello. How are you? Good. We're well, we're well, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see all of you. Kindly introduce yourselves quickly. Um, I'm Aria. I'm Layla. And I'm Liam. Wonderful. And all of you are 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 isolating together. Yeah. Indeed. Better so or worse. How does it feel to be be a musical family trying to, to trying to practice all under one roof? Um, well, it's a little bit tricky sometimes because we have to stagger who's playing one and uh who's got the doors open one, but I mean it has its benefits. We were able to just, you know, yeah. play together. And sometimes. we have one really good music stand that is constantly yeah. being passed around <laughs> our house because we're all fighting to get it first. <laughs> that that I understand is probably the most important part. So now, uh, one of you is is at UCLA. One of you is at Samo High, and one of you is at Lincoln Middle. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And is this is this the the first project that you have done together? Um, um just us three, I think so. Yeah, but. We've played together at, you know, Sola and um, in a bunch of different chamber ensembles before. I mean, before the quarantine, we didn't have all this time that we're not only like together, but we're able to, you know, Arya's able to arrange all this incredible music to, <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> to like best fit each of our, you know, musical abilities. So now that we have the opportunity to play together, we're doing it a lot more often. Which is great. And this particular arrangement, this is a, a work of Astor Piazzolla that you have arranged for, or Arias arranged for the three of you. 
Um, tell me a little bit about how you arrived at the arrangement and, and how you arrived at this piece. Um, well, we had just, uh, I had just played the Four Seasons at UCLA, um, which was, you know, such a blast. Uh, and then I think even closer to that, um, Rufus Bardal, who played last time, Antonio Lisi and I played a different version of the Four Seasons. And even before that, uh, we had gone on tour, Layla and I, to Argentina, where we played um, different Piazzolla pieces with our school. So it's kind of just been a composer that's, you know, been with us as we've played. So when Margaret came to us and she was talking about, hey, you guys should play a trio, I think the first thing that came to my mind was, let's play some Piazzolla. Piazzolla, indeed. And just to clarify, all those four seasons that he's been talking about are the Piazzolla four seasons, not the- Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in case anyone is deeply shocked when we get into yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that moment. Wonderful. Well, just before we, we start this, I wonder if each of you would just share one little thought about how, how it's feeling right now to, to be a musician and what all this is doing for your practicing and, and also what this is doing for your future thoughts about performance. Well, um, I feel that right now it's actually a pivotal moment to practice because you have like so much more time on your hands because we can't really go outside or like go to the park or go to the beach. So you're basically like cooped up in your house and you have all this free time and I feel like you could like practice and you could practice more <laughs> for like an hour or two hours. Yeah. You just have more time and I feel like it's better right now for musician. More time, but more blood feuds over the music stand. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, and with Sola, they're actually going, you know, a lot of online classes. Like Liam's was just at an ensemble yeah. like, online with all of his friends, which is really amazing to, you know, not only play, but to see your friends. And I've been taking music theory classes online with my teacher and my friends. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really difficult. And I've been so lucky to, you know, been quarantined with like my two like best friends and brothers. And so oh. it's, it, you have to really look for the positive sides and they definitely are, you know, with, you know, with a lot of shut doors, there are a lot more opportunities that have arisen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially um, with the ability that, you know, a lot of things are moving online. I think this is like, you know, this is the time to figure out how to use, you know, computerized music and figure out how to, you know, share music in a different way that wasn't really um, so utilized before you know, trying to make music, share music, you know, all that. Well, we're, we're so fortunate that you're all under one roof, that, uh, that all of you were able to put this together. And you just recorded this the other day, right? This is a brand new, the hot off the presses. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Which is wonderful. So we're, we're grateful to you for sharing your creativity, your family and your, your time with us. And um, let's take it away. Let's see, see how Piazzolla has come across in this trio. We're looking forward to it. Introduce the piece for us real quickly. Um, so it's Piazzolla's Oblivion Tango, arranged for three people. <laughs> These three specifically. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Aria, Liam, and Leila Shapuri, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sola Academy, for sharing your incredible students with us. Um, and also, uh, uh, just to the to the future of music right there. How, how wonderful to start this program with Lynn Harrell and, and to see these youngsters coming up in that great tradition. Um, I'm very pleased now to take us into the third segment of our program. Um, with the wonderful Lucia Micarelli. Um, Lucia, you may have come to know by a variety of means. She may be one of the most uniquely and unusually talented musicians and actors out there. Um, you may have come to know her through her uh, character on Treme, which is one of the ways I first came to, to admire her, um, as well as performances with Chris Bodie, Josh Groban, um, Jethro Tull. So she's uh, just an extraordinary violinist, actor, singer, songwriter, and creator. Um, one of the most unique careers out there, and it's a great pleasure to welcome her here to the show, Lucia Micarelli. Hi. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, we're so thrilled to have you here, and and I'm I'm personally such a fan, so I'm very excited to, to share this time with you. Oh, thank you. I know you have a bunch planned for us, so um, we'll come back in a little bit and uh, talk with you some more and take some questions. But for now, just take it away. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be a little old time fiddle tune called "Ladies Fancy." Thank you. 
Okay, tech elements here. <laughs> um, I'm going to sing a song called Careless Love. Um, it's an old blues tune. I first heard I first heard a Bessie Smith recording of it, and I just really love this song. So this is Careless Love. Love, oh love, oh careless love You fly through my head like wine You wreck the lives of many poor girls And you let me spoil this life of mine Love, oh love, oh careless love In your clutches of desire You made me break a many true vow Then you set my very soul on Oh, oh, love, oh, careless love. <laughs> oh, my happiness, I have left. Cause you filled my heart with these weary old blues. And now I'm walking and talking. To myself, oh, oh, love, oh, careless love. Night and day, I weep and moan. You brought the wrong man into this life of mine. And for my sins to judge me, I'll atone. Love, oh love, oh careless love. I think I need a bigger head to keep my headphones on. <laughs> um, the next song is uh, one of my favorite Tom Waits songs, and um, I'm performing it with one of my favorite musicians and one of my best friends, uh, Leonardo Amuedo. He's an incredible guitar player from Uruguay um, and has lived in Brazil for many years. And now I'm so happy <laughs> that he lives here um, in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite Tom Waits songs. It's called Fish and Bird.
But the ocean is filled with tears And the sea turns into a mirror There's a whale in the moon when it's clear And a bird on the tide Please song so much um the next song is called little love it's by gabriel kahane um who is one of my favorite songwriters and actually the first time that i saw him live it was at the broad stage so yay <laughs> the broad stage um for introducing us to all kinds of amazing artists um once again with the brilliant leonardo amuedo this is little love by gabriel kahane
play some Bach. This is the adagio from uh, Bach's first solo sonata.
Thank you so much, Lucia. Oh, thank you. Welcome, welcome back to the speaking portion of our show. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. It, it's just a remarkable thing to hear you take Gabriel Kahane, Tom Waits, and and JS Bach um, with equal conviction and technical capacity. It's just <sighs> it's just remarkable. Oh, thank you so much. Thank so, you. I wonder if you would talk to us a little bit about sort of your musical fluidity. You know, there it's it's a wonderful thing that you sort of came into the world as, as I understood you first as a classical violinist and blossomed into all of these other things, but maybe all of these things were there all along. So I, I wonder if you'd share a little bit your your musical journey. Um no, I don't I don't I don't think that all those, those things were not there all along, but um I guess I've just always been curious. I mean, I, you know, I was a classical violin, or I'm a classical violinist, and um, you know, I went to Juilliard Prep when I was like 11, and and studied with Dorothy Delay, and studied with Zuckerman. But when I was around 17, and I finally like left home, and I was sort of on my own, and I was living in Manhattan, and I got really into jazz and classic rock mm -hmm. like at the same time because um i hadn't actually listened to anything except classical music until i was 17 and a friend of mine who was also um a classical musician he made a mix cd for me <laughs> and it had like pink floyd and led zeppelin and miles davis and john coltrane and all of these all of this stuff that I had never heard before. And I was just like so blown away and then like fascinated. So I got really into classic rock and tried to learn all the like guitar solos on the violin. <laughs> and then I also was just so sort of stunned and amazed just by jazz and that whole world. Mm -hmm. And I started going to jazz clubs and listening to stuff. And so, you know, it just came out of that. Like I was, I was attracted by the music that I heard and it made me want to learn about it. Um, I, I started, I wanted to learn how to improvise. So I asked mm -hmm. friends that I knew who, who improvised if they would teach me and kind of started, just started playing other kinds of music other than classical and, and things just sort of uh, led to the next thing. Um, I would say that the biggest influence in my musical life um, in terms of the you know the now broad uh broad landscape is really just people that i've met i've met so many incredible musicians and i've had so, so many sort of like strange opportunities to jump into like a world that i know nothing about and i'm fine <laughs> i'm fine with being real uncomfortable and not knowing what's going on so i've just i've just i always say yes and i end up meeting all these incredible people and learning about all different kinds of music. And so over the years, it's, it's, it's you know, it was classic rock and jazz. And, and then with um, Treme, uh, when I went down to New Orleans, you know, I learned a lot about m music of, of the South and, and then also started singing, which I'd never done before and was acting. I don't know. Everything is just sort of um, accidental, but I will say I'm, I'm always um, curious and willing to, uh, to jump in and make an idiot of myself if need be, because I'm excited to maybe learn something new. I wonder if if you would talk a little bit about your 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 turn in acting and if it was easier for you to step into that because you were playing a wonderful musician and if that was a, a way in for you or or how natural that felt and also the discovery of your singing voice, which is is just iconic and beautiful. It's it's unmistakably you. Thank you. Um, yeah, with the acting, I mean, it definitely helped that David Simon, um, the creator of the show, he's so brilliant. He created The Wire and The Deuce and, yeah. and so many amazing shows. But um, it definitely helped. Like when I, once they cast me, he kind of he kind of molded Annie, my character's story around my real story. And so, you know, it definitely that that made it a little bit easier. And then also. Um, I got to hide behind my violin a lot, especially in the first season. I was mostly playing and not talking all that much. Like hiding, though. I mean, <laughs> you know, we were all very glad every time you had your violin. Not to say your acting was spectacular, <laughs> but it was so inherent to that character, and it was just—it was completely real. It was just incredible. It was. I mean, it was so much fun to 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 get to know that. I mean, I had been to New Orleans before, like on tour, but to get to know the city through the musicians because. 
those were the people that I was hanging out with, you know, yep. every week I was like trying to learn super quick, learn like some new style of music that I'd never heard before. So I would always hang out with the musicians. And that was just, again, like such, such an incredible thing. I feel like um, my life has really been shaped and blessed by um, being able to be around musicians and have them show me, show me things. <laughs> Yeah. Let's look a little bit to, the, to this moment and also, uh, and, and hopefully to the future. Um, this is obviously transformational to the, to the performing arts, what we're going through right now. And, um, you know, live performance is, is, is simply eradicated from our conversation for a little while. And we're, we're all in our living rooms, uh, beaming back and forth to each other as best we can and sharing as much as we can. What do you see as, as, as maybe one of the most useful aspects of what we're going through right now to your creative life? And what do you see as something you're looking forward to on the other side of all of this? I mean, to my own creative life, I mean, it's, I, I enjoy having, you know, much like, um, um, the kids earlier were saying I enjoy having the time to 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 just spend um, working and practicing and and mm -hmm. and making. But I would say m m the thing that really sticks out to me so much, um, and Lynn had touched on it too, is just you kind of uh, realize at a time like this uh, how important the arts are. Everyone is sort of like hungry for it, and everyone not only are audiences, you know, willing to uh, experience it in any way they can, but on the other side, artists are just, some artists are just being so incredibly creative and finding so many ways to adapt. And I find that really inspiring. Like, I think, um, I think it's beautiful to just like watch how quickly humans and, you know, human beings in general, just how quickly we kind of adapt to whatever's happening and, and, and figure out a way to do what is essential for us or to consume, you know, to, to reach what is essential for us. And obviously that's connection, human connection and, and arts in, in, in a certain way. And so I, I, I think it's, I think it's amazing. And I do think that there's a lot that will, will, will happen and is happening during this time um, that will change, you know, the entertainment industry or the music industry um, for the long run. But I mean, I would say that about like every single industry right now. I think that it's a, a, a it, it's a crisis and it's also weirdly a time of sort of rapid, rapid growth and adaptation. And I, I almost feel like we're you know, as a, as a planet and as a species, we're just like jumping forward a lot, you know, cause we're just like having to, to figure it out. So I'm, I'm excited about what's on the other side of this, but you know, mostly I'm, I just, I hope that, I hope that we get, I hope that we get through this sooner rather than later. And I hope that, um, I hope that everyone's okay. It's really, it's really intense. <laughs> It is indeed, it is yeah. indeed. I can't tell you um, how grateful we are to you for this time and for all of your thoughts, your incredible music. You. Um, and I wanna thank you uh, for being with us and we look forward to having you live as soon as we possibly can. Yay, <laughs> I look forward to that too. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. So with that, we will conclude our second ever music morning um, and we'll look forward to the next. Um, I hope for all of you out there that you're you're staying safe, you're staying as healthy as you possibly can, and you're staying inside. Stay home um, and uh, stay with us. We're we're really uh, doing our, our level best to bring you um, a little bit of enjoyment and uh, and some time to share with all the things that we care about so much at the Broad Stage. And uh, we look forward to continuing this process until we're on the other side. So thank you so much for your kind attention for spending the morning with us, and we'll see you next week.